This morning from Downing Street, our political editor, Darren McCaffrey, uh, is there. Good morning to you, Darren. Uh, you've been speaking uh, to members of parliament uh, since last night's vote. Just tell us, what do Conservative uh, colleagues think of Theresa May now? Do they think her leadership is, uh, well, she's out of the woods yet? Well, it really depends who you uh, talk to, of course, uh, Bell. Uh, those that voted for Theresa May, well, they fundamentally believe uh, that this has strengthened uh, the Prime Minister's hands in, uh, as the leader of the Conservative Party that this, she saw off essentially the Brexiteer challenge that had been brewing for months here in uh, London and that of course she cannot now be challenged for the next year, that she needs to get on uh, as one supporting newspaper this morning with the job of delivering Brexit for the British public. That was certainly the message we've seen from Theresa May uh, last night. Then in contrast, uh, speaking to those who clearly did not support uh, her leadership, who did not vote for her in that confidence uh, vote last night, well they believe uh, that this is in some ways the worst of all worlds, that they have inflicted uh, damage on the Prime Minister, uh, but not fatally. Uh, they look at the result in which over, what, a third of Conservative MPs said they had no confidence in her uh, to remain uh, as leader of their party. Uh, that's a pretty uncomfortable score uh, for a uh, leader, not least of all given the history of the Conservative uh, Party. Uh, and they believe uh, that she still does not have the authority to get this withdrawal agreement uh, through the Commons. Now, of course, Theresa May is going to travel uh, to Brussels uh, later on today, uh, in which he's going to try and get those assurances uh, on this withdrawal agreement, not least of all uh, on the backstop. Well, let's talk a little bit more about that, uh, that withdrawal agreement, Darren. She, as you say, her work is cut out for her. What do you think uh, her chances are of getting this through and seeing Brexit through? That's essentially what she wants to do now. Yeah, well, I mean, that's a really, really difficult question to answer in many regards, uh, Bell. Uh, there's an awful lot of politics to come between now and the end of March next year when Britain is uh, due to leave the European Union. I think in the uh, immediate future, of course, uh, what she now has to do, having won that vote of confidence, is try and make some progress on uh, the withdrawal uh, agreement because there are many Conservative MPs who may well have supported her uh, last night but do not still support her deal. Uh, we have had word from the European Union that while the negotiations are not uh, going to be reopened. Uh, they are prepared to give more assurances on this issue of, of the backstop, uh, not least of all suggesting uh, that it should be uh, temporary, uh, that ultimately they do not think it is the number one uh, option. Uh, but the question, of course, is can Theresa May get anything legally binding uh, when it comes to those uh, assurances? Because if not, be in no doubt, to quote Theresa May back at herself, uh, nothing has changed in all of this. She may well have survived a vote of confidence, uh, but the chances of her getting Getting her deal, which she admitted on Monday, were pretty remote. Uh, well, they remain as remote as ever. Now, a huge manhunt for the suspected gunman who shot dead two people in Strasbourg continues two days after the deadly rampage. Police are treating the attack as an act of terror and they've identified the suspect as 29-year-old Sherif Shekat, uh, a Strasbourg native known to have been radicalised in prison. Luke Barber reports. Candles are lit for the victims of Tuesday night's gun attack in Strasbourg. At least two people were killed, a third was left brain dead and a dozen more were injured after a gunman opened fire near a busy Christmas market. It's important to have a period of mourning and to remember the victims and to say that what happened is not irrelevant. It should never become irrelevant. Police have issued a call for help to find the man suspected of carrying out the attack. He's been named as 29-year-old Sharif Shekhat, a man with 27 convictions for crimes including robbery spanning France, Germany and Switzerland. Now the hunt is on. More than 700 security personnel have been deployed in France to bring the suspected killer to justice. The concern is the suspect may have already crossed the nearby Franco-German border. French authorities say Shekhat, who was born in Strasbourg, is believed to have been radicalized while in prison. On Tuesday evening, the suspect, who was armed with a gun and a knife, opened fire, apparently at random. As he fled, he came into contact with four soldiers and began firing at them. They fired back, apparently hitting the shooter in the arm. He later escaped the area after commandeering a taxi. France has raised its security threat to the highest level, increasing police patrols across the east of the country in case of copycat attacks. 
Meanwhile, Strasbourg's famous Christmas market, which would normally be full of festive shoppers, is closed. Luke Barber, Euronews. Italy's Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte has met with European Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker for the latest round of budget talks. Italy has been at loggerheads with Brussels ever since submitting their proposed budget for approval in the summer. Hoping to fend off EU disciplinary measures, Prime Minister Conte proposed reducing Italy's deficit target from 2.4 to 2.04 percent. Conte didn't say how the deficit will be cut, but he maintained that planned pensions increases and welfare handouts will go ahead as promised. Uh, well, uh, we're joined now by Giorgia Orlandi, a journalist from our Italian service, to talk a little bit more about this. Uh, good morning, Giorgia. Uh, so Conte has promised that he'll reduce uh, the budget, uh, the deficit target. He hasn't quite said how he might manage that. Well, this is the big question. It's not quite clear how they're going to do it. Probably they will sell some uh, public assets. What is clear, though, is that they don't want to touch on those uh, political measures, those political promises that they want to deliver on uh, coming from the uh, general elections. One of these is the uh, boost for lower income families. The other one is the uh, pension reform. What we've heard from the European Commission is that significant progress uh, is uh, made now in the talks between the Italian government and uh, the European Commission. But of course, uh, there is a bit of time there ahead to see uh, what's going to happen afterwards. And even once he's negotiated that with the EU side sort of things, Conte's got to bring this back to Italy and to the parliament there. How's that going to go down? The Italian government is very much divided within itself. There's one moderate uh, uh, side. That one is the one formed by Prime Minister Conte and Finance Minister Tria. The other one is represented by the two that Deputy Prime Ministers uh, Salvini and Di Maio, they didn't want to go below the 2.2 percent of uh, GDP, so they've made some concessions there. Uh, the Italian government has a time until the 19th of December to change this budget, but they have to do it before the end of the year. And in, in January 2019, the, the European Commission might ratify some, uh, well, the procedure for excessive deficit there. So a bit of time there. Why is it that Italy is so in the firing line uh, from Brussels? when France, for example, has a deficit target that's actually above what Italy first proposed. Yes, well, Italy has the third largest economy in the Eurozone, but yet as one of the largest debt uh, with the rate of around 132% of GDP. In the case of France, France is pushing for a higher deficit, around 3.5% with what Macron proposed recently, but the debt is much lower there, so a different situation. All right, uh, thank you very much for talking us through that. Giorgio Orlandi there from our Italian uh, service.